Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God, our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text is taken from our gospel lesson, Mark chapter 10, verses 17 through 22, as read a few moments ago. Dear fellow redeemed in Christ, I swear while growing up, no wedding reception was complete without two songs. The first one was the chicken dance. (laughs) How many of you know what the chicken dance is? If you don't, look it up. I'm sure you'll find it somewhere on the internet. The other song was the hokey pokey. I would ask you how many of you have done the hokey pokey, but you probably would not raise your hand. (laughs) That little song and dance urges the participants to put their left arm in and then take their left arm out and then put their left arm in and what? Shake it all about. about. See, you guys know what it is. (laughs) You do the hokey pokey and then you turn yourself around because that's what it's all about right? Yeah. But that's not the end of the song. Because then they'll have you putting your left leg in and then your left leg out and do it all over again and then your right leg and it goes down the line every part of your body. And then it ends with putting your whole self in and your whole self out. You put your whole self in and you shake it all about, right? In our text for today, Jesus invites the young man, the rich young man, to put his whole self in. Well, he invites him, in essence, to be all in. Now, this guy had a lot of things going for him. Our text tells us that he was young. Our text tells us that he was rich. The parallel passage in St. Luke chapter 18 tells us that this man was a ruler as well. So he was young, he had youth, he had wealth, he had money, and he was a ruler, so he had power. The young man had it all. He had everything except the one thing, no amount of youth, no amount of power, No amount of wealth could ever buy, and that was eternal life. It is this recognition that drove this young man to Jesus. Kneeling before Jesus, he asks, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And I think Jesus' response is pretty interesting here. Why do you call me good, Jesus says. No one is good except God alone. Now, contrary to what we might think, Jesus was not denying his own goodness, nor was Jesus denying that he is God. What Jesus was doing in our text was forcing the man to recognize that his only hope was total reliance upon God, who alone can give eternal life. Furthermore, I think Jesus was encouraging this young man to consider the full identity and the nature of the one to whom he was talking. Obviously, the man must have perceived that Jesus was someone very, very special. Otherwise, why would he have approached Jesus in the first place? Now, in our text, Jesus continues his answer by saying, You know the commandments. Do not murder. Do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not bear false witness, do not defraud, honor your father and mother. Now, before we go on any further, I feel the need that I need to, I feel the need to explain a few things here. It sure sounds like Jesus is saying that you can be saved by following the commandments. Think about it for a moment. The man asks what he must do to inherit eternal life, and Jesus says, go and do the commandments. So is Jesus contradicting the faith? 
Is Jesus saying that you can somehow earn eternal life by simply following the commandments? In order to answer these questions, we need to take the Bible and Jesus in context. Remember what the Bible says. St. Paul writes in Romans chapter 6, verse 23, The wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. So if the wages of sin is death, as St. Paul says, then, the, then reason tells us that, there, if, it, that if there is no sin, then there would be no death, right? In other words, if sin equals death, then no sin must equal no death. That's entirely true. If Adam and Eve had not sinned, if they would have followed God's command, then death would not have come to them, and they would have lived in the Garden of Eden forever, just as God intended. So what Jesus is saying here in our text is absolutely true, even for us. If we were perfect, if we were able to follow God's law perfectly all the time, then we would not experience death. But that's not reality, is it? The fact of the matter is that Adam and Eve did sin. And they passed that sinful nature on to their children, including us. And we have continued to pass on that nature to our children. Therefore, the law cannot save us any longer. The law can only condemn us. And that was Jesus' point to the rich man. Follow the commandments perfectly and you will live. But you have to be perfect about it. If you insist on earning your salvation through good works, then your good works must be good all the time. And not only your works, but also your thoughts must be good all the time. The surprising thing in our text is that this young man seems to think that he's done it all. He thinks that he's fulfilled the commandments. Teacher, all these I have kept from my youth, he says. But then Jesus shows him how wrong he truly was. Go and sell all that you have and give it to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. And come, follow me, Jesus says. With these words, Jesus tells this young man, in essence, to do the hokey pokey. Well, not really. But he tells him to be all in, to put his whole self in. Unfortunately, there was too much, this was too much for him. Because our text says that the young man goes away in sorrow. You see, what, at the, what is at the heart of it all is idolatry. Now, we often think of idolatry as worshiping an inanimate object like a statue. But you see, idolatry can take on many, many forms. In reality, idolatry is anything that interferes with your relationship with God. Now, it's pretty easy for us to see that this rich young man loved his wealth more than he loved the Lord. It's much harder to see it in our own lives. It's much harder to see our own idolatry. Remember, anything that interferes with your relationship with God has become an idol. Whether that thing is family, whether it's your job, whether it's yourselves, or whether it's your wealth, like the example in our text. Unfortunately, this is not just a problem of people. 
idolatry can be a problem in institutions as well, institutions like the church. There are plenty of self-absorbed congregations that look inwardly. This can be a form of idolatry. Churches love to have programs, but they are useless if the focus is always inward and not outward. I like to think of these congregations as maintenance churches. They just maintain the status quo. Don't rock the boat. Don't ask me to do something that may make me feel uncomfortable. Eventually, a maintenance church becomes a hospice church, biding time, waiting for the inevitable. So what about our church? What about Mount Calvary Lutheran Church? Are we all in? What about you? Are you all in? Are you willing to sacrifice all your health, your wealth, your time for the sake of Jesus Christ? Though we may be hesitant, thanks be to God, Jesus was not hesitant. He sacrificed all so that his life might be a substitute for our lives. He sacrificed all the riches of heaven in order to take on human flesh for you. He sacrificed all his time he left eternity to enter into time in order that he might be able to relate to us, in order that he might be able to experience the things that we experience, both the successes and the hardships. Jesus sacrificed all his health, enduring the punishment we deserve as he was beaten and spit upon and sentenced and crucified. For all those times, we were hesitant to be all in. He sacrificed all so that you and I who, and all who trust in him might know the love of God in our life. You see, God created us to live, not to die. Because of sin, all will die. Yet because of Jesus Christ and his sacrifice, all are made alive. The vision of our church must always be to constantly look outward. What is important is how many lives are touched by the message of Jesus Christ. And even if this congregation ceases to exist in the future, let it be said of us that we did our part to share the message Jesus gave us with as many people as Jesus gave us. For that reason, for the sake of the gospel, we must constantly be on our guard against idolatry, both individual and as a congregation. Neglecting or abusing God's blessings must never be an option for us. It is true. God has blessed us in so many ways. May we now turn that blessing outward and be a blessing to others. Now is the time, my friends, to do that little song and dance. Now is the time to put your whole self in. And so I ask you again, are you all in? Are you all in for Christ? Amen. And now the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. <laughs>